a huge myth tradition. Number one, um, you hear many Seventh Day Adventists. Uh, we say that there is no new light. We they, they say the pillars, the pillars, the pillars are beautiful. Yes, but I'm gonna read with you first this. I want to mention our grand uncle Jan, Jan Andrews, Jan Andrews, uh, and what he had to say of his day. John Nevin Ad Andrews, what he had to say about his day. If the Advent body itself were to furnish the the fathers and the saints, he's speaking of the early church, the the he's speaking of the church fathers, um, in the early centuries. Um, if the Advent body itself were to furnish the church fathers and the saints for the future church, uh, heaven pity the people that should live hereafter. Reader, we entreat you to read your Bible. Uh, this is this is a pioneer. 1854, he spoke this in the Advent Review and Sabbath Herald, January 31st, 1854. Uh, to find that, that you would have to type A- at R S H space January space thirty one comma space one eight five four, and then you'd have to turn turn to page ten paragraph ten. It would say one zero period one zero. Okay, Ellen White too ran onto Ellen. She had to say this of her day, her own day. Uh, greater light shines upon us than shone upon our fathers. Uh, not talking, not talking about the the Catholic fathers here. Than shone upon our fathers, we cannot be accepted or honored of God in rendering the same service or doing the same works that our fathers did. In order, in order to be accepted and blessed of God as they were, we must imitate their faithfulness and zeal, improve our lights as they improve theirs, and do as they would have done had they lived in our day. We must walk in the light which shines upon us, otherwise that light will become darkness. And she said this in volume one of the testimonies, page 262, paragraph one. You would, you would type that and you would find you would find it by typing 1T space 262 period 1. I'm just going to tell you the the exact places. Uh, you go on the egwwritings.org on the computer, on your mobile phone, and on there in the search engine, that's where you would type what I'm doing, the 1T space 262 period 1. And then you'd click enter and it'd take you right to the statement. Okay. So what's going on? Is there no... That was of their day. And that language, Grand Auntie Ellen, she as if, she as if alluded to also and towards our day too. How we must walk in the light. That walking in the light that doesn't end. But let's 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 show it plainly. Grand Auntie Ellen speaking directly to this. Is there no new light for God's people? For uh, God's last day remnant church, this blessed Seventh day Adventist church. There's no church after this. This is the last church, the seventh church in Revelation chapter three of the seven churches. And there's there's no there's no eighth church after this. This is the only church fulfilling the prophecies of Revelation 14, and this is the only church that is walking in that whole counsel of the Lord as as to the light that has been revealed to them. They're walking in the whole counsel of the Lord as weakly and as as pitiably as we might be. Yet the Lord has been giving us great grace and great His great hand has been leading in this church even. Even with us, even with us, us broken pieces, he's been he's been doing great things. But let's show these statements directly and truly, and you'll see, without a shadow of a doubt, that 
there is new light for this church. So let's knock down this myth tradition that we are hearing stirred up and continued repeated so long. And it's keeping us asleep, I believe. Because Laodicea, we have to have our eyes with eye salve. Our eyes have to be like Jesus in Revelation 1. His eyes is on fire. We, Laodicea, we need to be stirred up and we need that fire in our eyes too, what Jesus has, so that we can see by the word of God. And as Jesus said, if your if your eyes be good, the lamp the, the eyes is the lamp of the body. It's the lamp of the body. If your eyes be good, your whole body is full of light. So our eyes need to be on fire. Our whole body needs to be full of light. And we need to walk in the Lord's counsel. And we need to encourage others. Be his be his little lights of the world. Be his his church, that that fire on the lampstand, that seventh church, and with each of the candelabras all lit. We need to perfect and we need to complete this work on this earth. So let's see how does that happen. We have to have his light, his truth, his word, his law, himself in us. Otherwise, we perish. Is there new light for this church? Go with me to five, volume five of the testimonies, uh, page 80, paragraph one. That's 5T space 80 period one. That's 5T space 80 period one. The days are fast approaching. She says, the days are fast approaching. Okay, so this is sometime in the future. Okay, the days are fast approaching when there will be great perplexity and confusion. Satan clothed in angels will deceive, if possible, the very elect. <clears throat> there will be many gods and lords then. Excuse me. Uh, every wind of doctrine will be blowing. Those who have rendered supreme homage to science, falsely so-called, will not be the leaders then. Those who have trusted to intellect, genius, or talent will not then stand at the head of rank and file. They did not keep pace with the light. What does it say? They did not keep pace with the light. That means there's light that the Lord is showing forth, but we're not following it. We're not continuing it. Why? It says, it, it didn't say that they weren't following it. It says that they did not keep pace with the light. Interesting. So not even, so two things. It's pointing to that people they didn't follow and it's pointing to that people didn't follow it quick enough. They didn't follow when the Lord presented it to them. So it says, they did not keep pace with the light. Those who have proved themselves unfaithful will not then be entrusted with the flock. In the last solemn work, few great men will be engaged. They are self-sufficient, independent of God, and he cannot use them. The Lord has faithful servants who in the shaking testing time will be disclosed to view. So what is she? what time is she talking to? She's talking to when? She's talking to the last days. She points to the shaking testing time. And if you're Adventist, you know that those are the last days. And we're coming to those days. Those days, as she said in the beginning of this paragraph, are fast approaching. Let's continue. Here is more evidence that there is still more light for us to still find in the last days. This is found in, in um, CW space 47 period 1 cw space 47 period 1 says submit new light to experience brethren that's the subheading submit new light to experience brethren so there's new light being received let's see let's see if that's so there are a thousand temptations in disguise prepared for those who have the lights of truth interesting and the only safety for any of us is in receiving no new doctrine okay because there are many many uh falsehoods in this world and the only safety for any of us is in receiving no new doctrine no in new interpretation of the scriptures without first 
So this is this is the condition without first submitting it to brethren of experience. So she's saying, if you receive any light, what do you do? You got to be slow. You have to first submit it to the brethren of experience. Those who are experienced in the word, your elders, your deacons, those, your Bible instructors and teachers, etc. To lay it before them, conference leaders, etc. Whoever says to lay it before them in a humble, teachable spirit. Because there's many falsehoods out in the world, uh, unfortunately, that people hold to, 2520, etc., that people hold to, uh, where that they, they don't know the truth, and they're, they're falling prey to false doctrine. But how do we present true doctrine? How do we present correct doctrine? Uh, we have to be in a humble spirit, a humble teachable spirit with earnest prayer, earnest prayer. And you have to submit it to those brethren of experience. Lay it before them, it says, she says. Um, and she continues, uh, in a humble, teachable spirit with earnest prayer. And if they see no light in it, yield to their judgment. For in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. That is beautiful, a beautiful scripture she quotes. And that is a beautiful counsel that she gives us for this day. I'm going to present this to you. I've presented to many other people already uh, on what I'm going to share. This one and the next myth tradition. We're going to come to that one too in this uh, video. But two statements so far saying that there's light for us in these last days. Let's go to another statement. This is in PC space 342 period 2. The end is near. The end is near. So this is in time and the end. We have not a moment to lose. Light is to shine forth from God's people in clear, distinct rays, bringing Jesus before the churches and before the world. God will give additional light. And old truths will be recovered and replaced in the framework of truth. Old truths, she said, old truths will be recovered and placed in the framework of truth. Excuse me. Of course, of course, because based on Daniel 8, 14, the cleansing of the sanctuary, uh, the 2300 uh, evenings and mornings, the cleansing of the sanctuary, um, that word cleansing also means to restore. Uh, so we're... Not only cleansing the sanctuary, we're preparing, we're, we're, we're restoring it, and we're bringing it into right order. We are the sanctuary. We are the church. And so we're bringing back those truths piece by piece by piece that was desecrated by uh, Roman Catholicism, by the papacy in the Dark Ages, that was torn down, but we're restoring it. We're being fitted together into that holy building. Uh, and the Lord wants us to be put together. All we like living stones. So when the church is cleansed, when the bride makes herself ready, the bride, the woman being the church, um, that is when the Lord Jesus will be able to come. And when, when the church is ready and the, when the church does its mission and that is when Jesus is able to come. Next statement. Um, this is letter 22, 1889. That's the year that this was written. But this is uh, 1889. There's a 1888 context to that. 1888 is the time when we had our most precious message. But 1889, this is an important statement. Uh, but we're going to look at this in 1-3. Um, in, in MR space three three four period two. That's manuscript releases volume three, um, page three hundred and thirty four paragraph two. The so one three M M R space three three four period two. One three M R space three three four period two. 
there was to be special light for God's people as they neared the closing scenes of this earth's history. Another angel was to come from heaven with a message and the whole earth was to be lightened with his glory. That's the, the fourth angel's message found in Revelation 18. Um, it would be impossible for us to state just how this additional light would come. It might come in a very unexpected manner, in a way that would not agree with the ideas that many have conceived. That means what they've already conceived. Uh, it is not at all unlikely or contrary to the ways and works of God to send light to his people in unexpected ways. I pray that this is one of those unexpected ways that you may receive. That me speaking, I pray that this is one of those unexpected ways that you can receive. Let's continue. This is found, next statement, DD space 7 period 5. D, D, space 7 period 5. The Bible was designed to be a guide to all who wish to become acquainted with the will of their maker. God gave to men the sure word of prophecy. Angels and even Christ himself came to make known to Daniel and John the things that must shortly come to pass. Those important matters that concern our salvation were not left involved in mystery. They were not revealed in such a way as to perplex and mislead the honest seeker after truth. Said the Lord by the prophet Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain. Dot, 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 that he may run that read of it. That's in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. The word of God is plain to all who study it with a prayerful heart. A prayerful heart. Every truly honest soul will come to the light of truth. Light is sown for the righteous. That's Psalms chapter 97, verse 11. And no church, no church, she says, and no church can advance in holiness unless its members are earnestly seeking for truth as for hid treasure. As for hid treasure. As a brother said to me, we cannot get comfortable, Laodicean. We cannot get too comfortable, Laodicean, and quit searching for new light. We have to find that light yet to be discovered. We have to find that light yet to be discovered. So are you one of those? The simplicity of the Bible as it reads, this is a, how, it, how he continued, the simplicity of the Bible as it reads, you know, just find it. The doctrine, it's established. All you have to do is find it. The teaching is established. The Word of God teaching, this Bible it's established. All you have to do is find it. Find that treasure. Let's continue. This is in Fundamentals of Christian Education. Um, and we're going to start at, this is how you find it. It's F-E space 474 period, period, um, and we'll start at Actually, let me, let's, let, my fault, I said the wrong one. We're going to start at F-E space 472 period 1. F-E space 472 period 1. Time is passing, and God calls for every watchman to be in his place. He has been pleased to lead us to a crisis greater than any since our Savior's first advent. What shall we do? God's Holy Spirit has told us what to do. But as the Jews in Christ's day rejected light and chose darkness, so will the religious world reject the message for today. Today, she says, men professing godliness have despised Christ in the person of his messengers. Like the Jews, they rejected God's message. The Jews asked regarding Christ, who is this? Is this not, is not this Joseph's son? Meaning, is not this Joseph's son we always have seen? 
always around us, growing up amongst us. She says, who is this? Is not this Joseph's son? He was not the Christ that the Jews looked for. So today the agencies that God sends, so today, she says, so today the agencies that God sends are not what men have looked for. But the Lord will not ask any man by whom to send. He, he won't ask for our opinion to whom to send, she's saying. But the Lord will not ask any man by whom to send. He will send by whom he will. He will. Men may not be able to understand why God sends this one or that one. His work may be a matter of curiosity. God will not satisfy this curiosity and his word will not return unto him void. I'm going to skip skip paragraph two. We're going to come to paragraph three. So for, coming, coming down to paragraph three. Every soul... So that's that's 472 period 3. Still in this same book, we're continuing, but skipping a paragraph. She continues, Every soul that names the name of Christ should be under service. All should say, Here I am, send me. The lips that are willing to speak vo and clean will be touched with the living coal and purified. They will be enabled to speak words that will burn their way to the soul. To the soul, the time will come when men will be called to give an account for the souls to whom they should have communicated light, but who have not received it. Those who have thus failed in their duty, who have been given light, but who have not cherished it, so that they have none to impart. So she's saying that's the reason they have none to impart are classed in the books of heaven with those that are at enmity with God, not subject to his will or under his guidance. Skipping down, skipping down now further to uh, page 473, period two, it's the same book, page 473, period two, she says this, strict integrity should be cherished by every student. Every mind should turn with reverent attention to the revealed word of God. Light and grace will be given to those who, who thus obey God. Listen to it. She said strict integrity. She said turn with reverent attention. She said obey God. Let's continue. They will behold wondrous things out of his law. I love how she pointed to the law. Great truths, she continues, wondrous things out of his law. Great truths that have laid, lain unheeded, unheeded, and unseen. Things we have not seen since the day of Pentecost are to shine from God's word in their native purity. To those who truly love God, the Holy Spirit, I love that statement, to those who tr truly love God, the Holy Spirit, will reveal truths that have faded from the mind. Truths that have faded from the mind and will also re reveal truths that are entirely new. Now, we're going to stop right there, and then we're going to continue to the next, parag next paragraph, to the next page. Uh, four, page 474, period 1. Page 474, period 1. The Bible should not be brought into our schools to be sandwiched in between infidelity. The Bible must be made the groundwork and subject matter of education. Listen to this. It is true that we know much more of the word of the living God than we knew in the past, but there is still much more to be learned. Much more to be learned. As clear as that, she says it. 
She continues, it should be used as the word of a living God and esteemed as first and last and best in everything. She says that again for Christ to make Christ first, best, and last in everything. I love how she says this all that all that same phrasing also for the word of God. Sola Christos, sola scriptura. Amen. Jesus and the Bible, it's the twin pillars of the Protestant Reformation. She continues, then, she's continuing from where she left off, making the word of the living God and esteemed as first and last and best in everything, then will be seen true spiritual growth. True spiritual growth. The students will develop healthy religious characters because they eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of God. But unless watched, unless watched and nurtured, the health of the soul decays. Keep in the channel of light. Listen to this counsel. Keep in the channel of light. Pardon me. Keep in the channel of light. Study the Bible. She says, those who serve God faithfully will be blessed. He who permits no faithful work to go unrewarded will crown every act of loyalty and integrity with special tokens of his love and approbation. Uh, this statement is also found in the Review and Herald, August 17, 1897. But I was reading to you from Fundamentals of Christian Education. Um, oh me. And so we'll, we'll, we'll stop it at there. But all of this, we should not be surprised. Grand Auntie Ellen, she points to new light, greater light still for us as it was them of old. As it was Grand Auntie Ellen, as it was, uh, uh, Grand Uncle A.T. Jones, E.J. Wagner, uh, Uriah Smith. Uh, J.N. Andrews, et cetera, et cetera. J James White, Grand Uncle James. Um, all of them, new light, greater light for us today, just as it was also for them, as new light was they needed also. They had to seek after as for like buried and hid treasure. They had to keep seeking for. But we shouldn't be surprised. Why? Because scriptures tell the scriptures tell us this. The word of God tells us this. And so it agrees in John chapter 16, verse 13, and also in chapter 14, verse 26, uh, the Lord promising and telling us, prophesying even, uh, saying that the Holy Spirit, uh, the third person of the Godhead, uh, that he will lead you. He will lead you unto all truth and he will teach you all things. It's plain. Also, it's said right there in the in the Old Testament, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 18, and also verse 11 through 12 and verse 13. Read it in that specific order. It says, the path of the just, dot, 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 that sh shines brighter and brighter into the perfect day. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths when you walk your steps. You love that. I love that. Read it in that specific order. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, and verse 11 through 12, and verse 13. The path of the just that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths when you walk your steps. And after that, Psalms 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Lord's ministry shared with me in Streams of Light Ministries is to share the clear cutting truth. Again, I say it, the clear cutting truth of the full word of God and the counsels, the testimonies of Grand Auntie Ellen's. And I come in, in weak steps, but the Spirit of God works in me mightily, and may He work in you mightily too. Scriptures, it says it clearly. But all that being said, may the Lord help this, this greatly beloved church into our mission. 
our mission that should not cease. It's only as that as we continue in the light, our mission will be blessed and we'll finish the work. But we must continue in the light as students, as children, as those Patiently waiting, we have to. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, we have to. The entrance of your words giveth light, we have to. We need the holy word of God in our hearts so that we do not sin against him and that we can live this word of God and that we can imitate Christ who is the word of God embodied. Behold, in the scroll of your book, it is written of me to do thy will. It's a me messianic statement even. Let it be our statement as Paul said, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. So as we seek to desire to be like Jesus, we have to walk by the word of Jesus Christ, by the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, like a chain interlocking. If you don't follow the word of God, you don't know the real Jesus. Following the word of God, you have the real Jesus. Jesus warned that there would be many Christs and many false prophets. Well, guess what? If you hold to the word of God, as Grand Auntie Ellen pointed to, and as I point to, and as this church, beloved of the Lord, points to, you will not go astray. You have nothing to fear. All things may come against you. You have nothing to fear. The true Jesus is the Bible Jesus. And I can say that unapologetically. <laughs> the true Jesus is the Bible Jesus. There is one Jesus and he is the word of God. He is by the word of God. And any Jesus that you might find a fluffy Jesus or any anything else, a too, hardened, too much hardened in heart Jesus, that's not the Jesus that we serve. We serve the word of God Jesus, the Bible Jesus. And so... All these statements, it's agreeable to the scriptures, Grand Auntie Ellen's writings to the scriptures, scriptures to Grand Auntie Ellen's writings. Praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. We continue. That was one myth tradition. Now we come. Heavily knocked down. Now we come to the next one. And what is it? What is it? The law of Moses. The law of Moses. The law of God. The Ten Commandments. 